Hello everybody and welcome to this video. I am Nawri Radwan from photomanipulation.com. In today's video, I will show you some tips and tricks on how I edit and add small details on my artworks. And this is going to be the first part. So without any further ado, let's start with this tutorial. First tip, I'm going to show you how to add spotlights or the sun spotlights on the trees. And I'm going to show that on the middle tree right here. So I'm only going to show that tree just for the viewers to not get distracted by the other trees layers right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the quick selection mode and that's by either clicking on that icon or by clicking on the Q shortcut on the keyboard. Then I will click on filter, render, and then I click on clouds. Now we have this selection of the clouds. I'm only going to focus on the red color of the clouds. And by the way, you can change the color of the quick selection mode. And that's by clicking two times on that icon right here. You can also change the opacity of the color, how much is going to be visible in the quick selection mode. Then I'm going to click on Q again, filter, render, and then clouds. Now the next step is to click on Control T. That's to uh, use the free transformation tool that will allow you to change the size, the scale of the selection right here. And again, keep your eyes on the red color because this is going to be our spotlights. I will make this transformation uh, vertical by, by rotating it 90 degree right here. Then I'm going to align it with the tree. Okay, now I'm going to use the brush tool with a soft brush, the opacity on 100%, the flow in, also the flow is going to be 100%. I'm going to change the blending mode to linear light. Then I'm going to use the white color and paint on the other side of the tree that is not facing the sun or the source of the light. Now I will click on Control L to bring the levels menu and I will add contrast to the spotlights till they look like they are really spotlights. You can control how hard the edges or how soft the edges will be. And when you are satisfied with the shape, just click OK and then click on Control I to inverse the selection. Then click Q to exit the quick selection mode. Now, while the selection is active, I will go to the tree layer and I'm going to click on Control J. That will duplicate the selected areas that we selected with the quick mask tool. Then I will bring it all the way up to the top, just like that. Now I'm going to change the blending mode to screen. And with a Control L, I will slide this midtones to the left side, just like that. And then next step, I will click on Control B. This is to add the color of the source of the light. In our case, it's the sun, which is known to be a warm light. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and red on the midtones and on the highlights. Next step is to add the sun rays. And to add them, first go to this icon right here and add a gradient adjustment layer. Make sure the style is on angle and make sure you are using the transparent gradient right here on the basics. Make sure the type is noise and take the roughness all the way up to 100%. On the color mode, we are going to use the HSP, which is hue, saturation, and brightness. And let's decrease the saturation. On the options right here, click on Add Transparency. Then click OK. While the gradient fill menu is active or still on the or still in the screen, click and hold and drag this gradient all the way to the top or whatever your direction of the sun light or the source of the light and you can change the angle of it 
Make sure this scale on 100% and then click on OK. Right click on the layer and rasterize it. Delete the layer mask, click on Ctrl U and add lightness all the way up to plus 100. Next step is add filter, blur and click on Gaussian blur. Make sure not to blur it too much till the so we can see the texture of the sunlight or the sun rays sorry using the gradient transparent color and make sure the color is on black add a mask and click and hold shift and drag from the bottom to the top just like that to erase it from the uh, bottom ground also click and hold shift and drag from the left side to the right side or instead of dragging from the left to the right side, you can drag from the top left corner. Just like that. So we don't risk a lot of texture right here. And then apply it. Next step is click on Q to enter the quick mask mode. Then go to filter, render, and click on clouds. Click Ctrl T for free transformation. And increase the size of it by 250% yeah that's looking good then click Q to exit the quick mask mode and while the selection is active add the mask to the um, sun rays you can click control if you are not satisfied with the result that you got you can click on control I to inverse it and that's a better result as you can see apply the mask and click on control U to decrease the lightness of it so we can add the color to add the color click on ctrl b and you can add color of the source of the light for me it's going to be the warm color because it's a sunlight then i'm going to change the blending mode to screen of course you can get different results every time you do it for me i'm satisfied with this result you can make it more realistic if you add a floating spotlight on the air to do that add a new layer Click on Q to enter the quick mask mode. Then go to filter, pixelate, and mesotint. Choose the type coarse dots and then click on OK. You can see these red dots right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to increase it just a bit. Then I'm going to add filter, blur, and blur more. Then I'm going to click on Ctrl Alt F. To repeat the blur multiple times then i'm going to click on ctrl i then i'm going to add ctrl l for levels and add contrast to that spotlight then click q to exit the standard mode you can either paint on this direction of the sun rays or what you can do is just click on shift f5 and choose from here the foreground color which is this one then click on ok now we have these spotlights everywhere if you want them to be visible only on the sun rays what you can do is duplicate the sun rays layer then go to layer layer mask and then click on from transparency now we have the layer mask of the sun rays click and hold alt and drag it to the spotlights Let's change the blending mode to color dodge. And now we have this spotlights floating. Apply the layer mask and duplicate this spotlights layer. Then give it more blur to make them shiny. And change the blending mode to screen. One other note that I forgot to mention is that when you make the sun rays texture like that and you give it a blur you can control how much sun rays that you want to add by adding a layer layer mask from transparency and then click on the mask that photoshop made for you then click on ctrl l to add levels as you can see from here you can control how much rays that you can get and the final result should look like this now for me, the direction of the sun rays, it's wrong because it doesn't match with the 
size and the direction of the spotlights but in your scene it's going to be your choice wherever you want to put it and this is a wrap for these two techniques let's go for the third technique if you got value from this video so far and you want to see more advanced tips and techniques and if you want to support me as an artist make sure to get my digital landscape reloaded course the link is going to be down in the description when i first posted this artwork on my social medias i got this question a lot on how i added the water reflection and the way is too easy i'm going to show you that right now first let me get rid of that first reflection and what i'm going to do is i'm going to select all of the adjustment layer clip to it with the jet layer and i'm going to merge them on a new layer then i will put that layer of the jet all the way to the bottom or let's just say under beneath the original layer of the jet i will click ctrl t for free transformation then click then right click and click on flip on the vertical side and i will take that jet copy just right there now what i will do is i will add a new layer an empty layer then i will click and hold alt then drag it to this icon and this duplicate layer menu will pop up for the document i will choose a new one and i will name it a water displacement then i will click ok now we have this layer in a new document what i will do here i will click on shift f5 and fill it with 50 percent gray then i will go to filter filter gallery from the filter gallery go to texture then click on texturizer this is to add a texture to that 50 percent uh, layer that we made for the scaling i will increase that all the way up to 200 percent for the relief i will uh, control how bumpy it will be i will add it not all the way up let's say maybe 30. now i will click on ctrl t then increase the size of it like 300 percent maybe yeah it looks good now click ctrl a to select the canvas then go to image and crop it now click ctrl t and increase the vertical or and now increase the horizontal sides of the texture by clicking and holding alt then dragging this point right here to the left side or the right side till you get a texture that looks like water or a lake or a sea or whatever if you are satisfied with the texture that you got click ctrl a again to crop the image then go to filter blur and add gaussian blur and make sure to blur it just a bit maybe like that now change the image mode to grayscale so maybe let's try to give it more scaling on the horizontal line then go to filter stylize and embose from the embose right here i'm going to i'm going to change the angle to 90 degree and for the amount here i'm going to add maybe let's leave it like that and for the height i will keep it three right here maybe scale down just a bit and then let's save it as a water water displacement too what i'm going to do to the jet copy that we made that is going to be the reflection for the original jet first i will hide all of these other layers so we can only show that jet reflection right here next step is go to filter blur and add motion blur make sure the angle is 90 and decrease the distance just a bit let's say maybe 50% 15 sorry not 50 then click ok now what I want the further the reflection goes in the water the more motion blur it will get 
And to achieve that, what I'm going to click now is Q for the quick mask mode. Then choose the gradient tool. Make sure the color is black. Then I will drag from the bottom to the top for where the areas start to get more motions. And let's say from here. Then click Ctrl I to inverse the selection. Then Q to exit the standard mode. Then go to filter again, blur and motion blur. And here we are going to add more motion blur to it. Just like that. Now what I'm going to do is click right click and click on transform selection and drag this transformation or this selection right here to the bottom just like that then go to filter blur and motion blur again and let's give it a lot of motion blur for the next step go to filter filter gallery then go to distort and click on glass. From the texture right here, go to this icon, click on it, and then click on load texture. And the texture that we are going to load is the water displacement that we just made. It definitely did a better result than the first one. Yeah, this one looks better. The only thing that's left is to add color to that reflection. That's by adding a levels set to color blending mode. Then give it the color of the lake. And also add more contrast to it. This is it for the first part of this series. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a like. Also, subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to grab my Digital Landscape Reloaded course. The link is going to be down in the description. And I will see you in the next part. Peace.